Matt Kepnes. I run a travel website called nomadicmat.com and I am passionate about travel. I was 23 and I went uh, to Costa Rica. I took my two week holiday vacation. I went to Costa Rica on a trip with a company called G Adventures. First time overseas by myself. And I thought, what the hell have I been missing? This is awesome. It's so much fun. Because you know, when you work in an office, like every day is kind of the same. You know, you get up, you go commute, you go to work, you come home, you go to the gym, you eat, you go to bed. Repeat for five days in a row. But on, when I, in Costa Rica, like every day I could do something different, I could do whatever I wanted. I was like, I love this. And then I went to Thailand the following year and uh, I met some backpackers and just got jealous I could have extended travel. And I came home, quit my job, and six years later, here I am. Well, actually, six years of on the road, it's been like 10 years, but. Uh, I have a book called How to Travel the World on $50 a Day. Uh, I'm passionate about travel, but I also believe that travel isn't that expensive. People think, oh, we're going to go away, it's going to cost us so much money. But if you think about where you're going, the people at that destination aren't spending tons of money per day. I mean, granted, you're going to do lots of activities and that's going to drive up your costs. But you know, if you go to New York, New Yorkers aren't spending hundreds of dollars a day to live there, so why should you have to spend so much to travel there? So my book, How to Travel the World on $50 a Day, basically takes a year-long trip and breaks it down to a $50 a day average. Um, so you're going to go to Europe, you're going to spend a little more, uh, you're going to go to Asia, you're going to spend a little less, uh, you're going to go to different countries in Europe, spend more in France than you will in Greece or Ireland um, and that $50 a day works out to $18,250 uh, and that does include airfare and everything. Uh, but even if you're not going to go away for a year, the tips on how to find a cheap flight, how to save money in Paris, you know, how to use travel discount cards and city passes to get free entry into accommodation can be used by anybody. So. It's fifty dollars, but you know, you might do Paris for seventy, but it's better than doing Paris for the two hundred that you get from booking via Expedia. Uh, at one point, I would love to have been a, like a quantum physicist. I really like science, uh, but I suck at math. Uh, so I used to get all these books on science, and I'd be fascinated by the theories, but the math and all those symbols, I don't know what that means. Indiana Jones. Uh, so I originally went to school to be a history teacher. Uh, it's my undergrad in history education. So in a way, what I do now kind of is what I always wanted to be. It's just a different, different side of the, the coin. Well, it's not really deep advice. Uh, you know, it's not one of those always look into your soul or, you know, be kind to strangers. Um, but one that I, that I like, and I, I, I hate this question sometimes because there's so much good advice, it's hard to pick one. Uh, it was like, the purpose of money is to spend it. And I like that advice because we're always like, I gotta save, I gotta save, or I can't afford stuff. But you get, you know, if you can't take it with you, you hold on to it less in, in a way that you realize that, that you're working to earn money to do what you love. And so, you know, I, it's good to save some stuff for a rainy day, but it means I'm not going to hoard my money. It means that I'm not going to get all bent over shape if I have to spend an extra hundred here or there on something because I'm working so I can actually have money to do the things that make me happy. So I can go book a plane ticket somewhere. So I, I thought that was a, an interesting perspective to look at that. Um, a lot of people think that I make money by getting everything paid for. That what I really do is lower expenses to zero. That's not true. I'm going to London for a conference and I'm paying the $2,000 that's going to cost me for flight, accommodation, and all those beers I'm going to drink. Um, so a lot of travel bloggers do make money through partnerships and I do have a few partnerships that bring in you know, a small amount of revenue. 
But it's basically, I sell books. Uh, I have a number of ebooks. I have a soon to be published print book. Uh, affiliate sales uh, and people booking their travel through my site is really the three ways that I make money. Uh, I do so, a small amount of consulting on the side and I'm gonna start doing more of that uh, in 2013. But it's hard to do consulting when you're traveling the world. So as I transition to semi-nomad living in New York City, uh, it'll be easier for me to do that. But yeah, those three things really pay everything. And you know, I get a lot of emails per day. Matt, i planning a trip, can you help me? And I'm really happy to answer those kind of questions. But sometimes I get novels. And then I get follow-up novels. And it's a lot of questions and what I find is people they they look on the internet and they find tons of information I mean you can plan your whole trip based on the free advice you can get on the internet and that's great uh, but some people don't know how to put that all together so I launched this planning service where um, I sit down with you over Skype uh, over the phone and I help you synthesize all that information into a coherent strategy on how to plan your trip. Now a lot of people say the best part is doing the self-planning and getting lost. And that's true. Um, I love that. But for a lot of people, they don't even know how to do that, right? And it's, you think like, oh, well, you just plan your trip. You get a flight and you go. And that sounds so easy and it is because it is that easy. But a lot of people don't understand that that it's that easy. So you kind of have to sit with them and be like, no, don't worry. Everything will be okay. Um, you're not going to get robbed in Paris or a hostile dorm room is going to be okay. People will be able to understand you. It is as easy as it sounds. And so my service is basically, um, there's three levels. There's the basic service, which is you get my book in an hour with me and I, I walk through any issues. And there's the second service, which is my book, two and a half hours with me, and uh, $400 worth of vouchers, which will get you discounts off uh, tours, travel insurance, uh, city walk tours, um, what else is there? Tra um, there's also flight discounts, there's, uh, train passes, a combination, and then there's the the big level, which is you get all that plus another two hours with me and then I go book your stuff. So you, there are a lot of people who are like, how do I know I got the cheapest flight? Well, you, know, you don't have to worry, I'll do it all. Um, but that's, you know, that's the heavy duty package. But overall, it's just the point of the service is really just to provide people with what a travel agent does is that they give you peace of mind. But a travel agent sits in one location. I spend my year traveling around the world. I, I don't make money by selling you a package. You're, you're buying my time and my advice, right? Whereas a travel agent, you get their time for free, but you're buying a product for them. My product is myself. But I'm not in, you know, you don't go down the street to Mass Travel Agency and sit down with me. You're going to call me and I'm going to probably be in, Africa somewhere, you know, researching and doing this stuff firsthand and getting that firsthand experience. Um, so I'm really there to like tell you it's not going to worry. And if you think, ah, oh, well, why would I want to pay someone to do that? Package A is seventy-five dollars. If you're spending eighteen thousand dollars on a year-long trip, or even five thousand dollars on your honeymoon, seventy-five dollars to know you're doing it the best you can is probably money well spent. I know it's money well spent because it's, it's me. When I went overseas, I'm going to do this gap year, this year away, right? You think of that as something retirees do or college students do. Nobody in the States really does this. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something different. And then you get overseas and then you realize everybody doing this, that really you're not special. and. That's good because it's very comforting to know that you're not crazy and that there's a support community for you for when you went to your crazy thing. And so my advice to be is do it because 
nobody in your immediate circle might do it, but there are other people doing it that you can reach out to for support to tell you you're not crazy, this can work, you can achieve it. Uh, my good friend Jason Cochran, uh, is, I would consider a, a close mentor. He's a travel writer. I uh, used to work for Fromers and AOL Travel before they became Huffington Post Travel. Um, but he was like the editor for my book and he really made me see writing, you know, and sussing out details and remembering that travel isn't so intuitive for people and you should really go to the basic audience. And he's made me a much better writer and a much better travel journalist in trying to work out the details and making sure all sources and the facts are correct. Always, always. Uh, my parents were always concerned. Uh, it, it wasn't until probably a year ago that my parents stopped asking me to get a real job. Um, you know, they see me on my computer all the time, thinking I'm on Facebook, and they saw me mention it's like CNN, and they had the book deal, like, oh, you're actually doing work. I'm like, yeah, that's why I tell you not to bother me, because I'm, I'm working. Uh, but they're always concerned when I go to a new country, be safe, be safe. And, you know, I'm like, it can happen in the States. It can happen in the States. So, their, their parents being parents, but they're happy that I have, I have a cool job. Picking your favorite place is like picking your favorite child. Um, I'm sure some parents can pick them, uh, but you love all your children for different reasons, but you love them all. Uh, I love Thailand. That's probably one of my favorite countries in the world. Friendly people, beaches, uh, cheap, warm weather. But at the same time, I love Sweden. Um, friendly people, it's gorgeous, like European architecture, uh, lots of nature set in, and incredibly attractive people. Uh, but I love France, the food there is great. Jap Japanese culture fascinates me, so I can't just pick one. But if I had to pick my top five, uh, Thailand, Sweden, France, uh, Japan, and Costa Rica. For South Pacific, I'd love to like boat around Tahiti, Bora Bora, the Cook Island, Vanuatu, all those places. Uh, Africa, uh, I have in touch Africa. I'm going to Africa in December, but still, I mean, Morocco, East Africa, the Seychelles, which is these beautiful tropical islands off the coast of Africa. I love to see Patagonia and uh, Argentina, the Amazon rainforest. The list is really endless. A better question is probably asking me where I don't want to go, which I would have to say, um, I think the only place I don't want to go is Saudi Arabia, mostly because it's lots of desert and you can't really leave Riyadh. So. Sorry if you're Saudi, but I, that's just the truth. Hmm. That is a really good question. Because now I have the whole... There's a lot of interesting people in the world. Jesus. No, that's a can answer, you know. Uh, I, w I would think, actually... You know... George Washington, during... Um, during his first week of presidency. Because, I mean, here's a man that under, understood his place in history, so it'd be really be interesting to be there, the first guy during the first week of the States. I mean, that would be, as a history lover, as someone who really likes history, to, to see that moment, like that week, and see how it all played out would be something interesting firsthand. Do it simply because nobody looks back and says, man, I wish I had spent more time in that crummy job I hated. Uh, know that the internet connects people from the whole world so that even though there's nobody in your immediate circle that does what you're doing, chances are there's at least two other people in the world who are doing what you're doing that can support you. Chances are there's probably a lot more than two also. And um, just take a risk because the worst thing that happens is you fail and you go back to doing what you were doing. But at least you tried. 
And you know what? It sucks failing, but you know, do or do not, there is no try kind of thing, as Yoda said. So that's my parting words of wisdom.